Howdy, Tim Hartman here again with uh, Aggie Horticulture, and today we're talking about jujube, or Chinese date. This is a fruit that many people may not know about. It's a very, uh, it's, it's a lesser known fruit, but it's incredibly easy to grow. And so if you're a, be a beginner, or maybe uh, you, know, you wanna try to grow fruit, but you don't wanna have to do a lot of spraying, a lot of work, this is the fruit for you. So Chinese date, or jujube, originates from, from southern and eastern Asia. Um, it's a fairly upright, fairly small tree. Usually it's not gonna get more than about 20 feet tall in Texas. And one way to really identify it is it tends to have this kind of zigzag growth. Um, as you see here, and so it's it's got a very unique look to it. The trees can be fairly ornamental as well. Um, nice dark green foliage. They can sometimes get some decent yellow color in the fall as well. And so they're beautiful trees, they're easy to grow. So juju, jujube, that is the scientific name, Zyziphus jujuba, for those of you who want to know, who, who get into this sort of thing, it's in the Romnaceae family, that is the buckthorn family. There are many species of Zyziphus. Um, they are all what we call droops. So basically what we have is, if you think about it just like just like a peach, we have the edible portion of the fruit, and then we have this hard pit in the center. Okay, this is actually part of the fruit. It's it's known as the endocarp or the stone. Inside of that is the actual seed. Okay, so these are fleshy fruit that have a hard stone in the middle. If you've never eaten a jujube, um, I like to think of them as kind of like apples, like dry, little dry apples. They have a flavor, uh, the texture especially is really similar to apple. They tend to be lighter, have a lower moisture content, um, but an apple-like flavor, but uh, they have some subtle hints of other fruits such as date. And another name for this fruit is is Chinese date because some varieties, especially as we mentioned, um, are allowed to dry down completely like a date and they're eaten that way as a completely dried fruit. Now these, these uh, little morsels tip, typically ripen late July going into August. We're a little bit late uh, this year uh, from my experience and they'll go from kind of a green color like this, yellow green color, to a nice golden color and the best time to pick them is once they start getting this brown color on them. Some people like to wait until they're completely covered in brown, but uh, I typically don't pick them until they at least have a little bit of brown on them. At that point, uh, we have maximum sugar content. Uh, the fruit are nice and soft, and they're not really a juicy fruit, but they've, they've got a nice, uh, really nice flavor to them. Um, they'll store a pretty good while in the refrigerator. Um, and again, as I mentioned, they're either eaten fresh or dried. Um, some people can them. I know my grandmother would actually pit them out and can them. Um, people have ev even made wine out of jujubes as well. And so there are a lot of things we can do with them, but most people elect to eat them fresh. One thing about jujube, as I mentioned, they're easy. They have uh, very little pests and disease problems. They're incredibly drought tolerant. They are not picky about soil. So I've seen them growing from uh, from the sandy acid soils of East Texas into the calcareous caliche soils of the hill country, and they don't care. They're not picky at all. They also have good tolerance to salinity, uh, where in many fruits, uh, really need good water quality. And of course, like any tree, once you, uh, like any tree, you have to water them initially to get them established, but once they get to this stage, uh, they're quite drought tolerant. And so, uh, another thing about jujube is they tend to be fairly precocious, okay? And precocious is a term that, uh, that indicates that this is a plant that uh, is able to produce flowers and fruit fairly early in its life cycle. So it has a short juvenile period. We like that when we're growing fruit because some crops like apple, pear, and obviously pecan can take quite a bit of time to get into production. So we're looking at about a three-year-old tree here and you can see it's already got fruit. Uh, what's interesting about jujube, it has a very unique uh, growth pattern, okay? So we have what appear to be um, these long leaves that look like they would be stems here. Uh, this is one stem with little leaves coming off, alternate leaves. And then between there, we have flowers and the fruit, okay? And so these actually are just grown during, these are actually produced during the growing season and they just hold on to the fruit. Some of these will continue to develop into 
actual lignified uh, woody stems, but most of these are just there temporarily to produce the flowers and fruit and then they'll fall off uh, later in the winter time, okay? Uh, jujube is a fruit that can be grown throughout the state. It's cold hardy. It can grow uh, all the way up into the northern part of, the, of Texas, but most of these varieties are also low chilling. So they don't need a lot of winter chilling as compared to uh, some crops like, for example, some of our, our peaches and, and, and apples and things like that. And so because of that, they're able to grow in the southern part of the state, but they're also cold hardy enough to grow in the northern part of the state as well. One other good thing about jujube that makes it very well adapted is that it tends to uh, resume growth fairly late in the season. Okay, so uh, other fruits like, for example, peaches, um, apricots, blueberries, they tend to bloom fairly early. And so because of that, uh, they, they start growing and they produce their flowers early enough that they can get hit by some late frosts okay, in the, in the spring. Whereas jujube, uh, like some other fruits like Asian persimmon, tends to come out fairly late. And so it's able to escape a lot of these late spring frosts that would otherwise uh, cause us to lose the crop. Now, it used to be that all we had available to us in Texas were the old Li, L-I, and Long, L-A-N-G. But uh, fortunately, we have many different varieties that are available to us now. Li is a fresh, uh, fresh eating fruit variety, whereas Long is primarily used for drying. But we have many different varieties. And so um, we're out here actually at the, Tex at the Texas A&M Teaching Research and Extension Center field lab. And Gu is trialing many new varieties of jujube, uh, trying to identify ones that have uh, um, superb flavor, uh, better size, and also good production. And so one thing we've noticed this year is that some of these trees, some of these varieties are quite loaded as you see here. And this is what we typically expect to see year after year with jujube. It tends to be a very prolific producer, a consistent bearer from year to year. But there are some varieties in here that have very little fruit or even none at all. And so um, it's really exciting to be working with some of these new varieties. Again, Dr. Gu is trying to identify those which are going to be, going to be uh, best adapted to Texas. So we have a lot of variety in shapes and sizes. Um, there's the variety So, which has also known as the contorted jujube, which has a really nice kind of spiral growth habit to it. Um, as I mentioned before, these are fairly attractive plants. If you're, if you're wondering why we don't grow this fruit more, um, of course, like anything, there are negatives associated with this crop, okay? It says in the Bible that the ground would produce thorns and thistles, and jujube has thorns. Now, not quite to the extent of a uh, of citrus or mesquite, but they do have some pretty nasty thorns on them. They tend to get a little bit better with age. They tend to have a little smaller thorns, but uh, these things, if you're not careful, they can they can really tear you up. Another problem with jujube, and this is probably the reason why more people don't grow them is because they produce these these suckers, okay? Jujubes, like most fruits, do not come true from seed. So if you take a seed and plant it, you're gonna get a tree that produces fruit that are not gonna be like the parent. Usually, usually they're gonna have inferior fruit quality and size relative to the parent, and so we graft jujube. Typically, we're gonna, we're gonna graft onto seedlings of one of the related species, like sour jujube, that is Xiphus spinosa. And so, of course, what we're doing is we're taking a vegetative portion of our of our good fruiting variety and we're going to be grafting that onto a seedling and so the top of the tree is going to be a genetic clone of the top and that's going to give us our our good fruit uh, whether that's honey jar or shanzi lee or ga866 whatever variety it is it's going to be able to produce that good quality fruit the problem is that jujubes tend to produce these suckers. Uh, this tree is doing pretty well. It has very few suckers on it, but I've seen 
uh, many places, in fact, I've driven across the state and seen whole thickets growing of just jujube root sprouts. And so they tend to do this more, it tends to be more of a problem on shallow soils if the root system is not really happy. And these things can sprout out sometimes as far as 10 or 20 feet away and can, can make a whole thicket. So if you do grow a jujube, we recommend that you put it in a place where you can control these suckers, at least mow around the tree to prevent them from sprouting and uh, really taking over. And remember that the suckers are from the rootstock. They're not going to produce the good quality fruit. Now, talking about propagation, many people, including myself, have gone and actually dug up, transplanted in the winter time, these suckers. Um, literally, that's what they're called, is root suckers. Um, we, we can dig them up, transplant them, and they'll graft readily easily. And so we can use them for propagating rootstocks, but realize they're not going to make good quality fruit. So we have to graft. Jujubes are, if you are into grafting, they're very easy to graft. They can be grafted um, by inlay bark grafting, bark grafting, cleft graft. Uh, I usually use a whip and tongue graft, and we can do this with dormant graft wood, but also um, in June we can use the new green growth also works pretty well uh, for doing summer grafting as well. So they're pretty easy to propagate, but remember, we do have to graft them. We have to propagate them clonally. So if you like what you see, you're really interested in growing this unusual fruit again. It's uh, fruit that you don't really have to do much to. You don't have to spray it. Um, really doesn't need a lot of fertilizer or water. Um, you may wonder, where do you get started? Well, this being a fairly obscure and, and uncommon fruit, it is kind of hard to find the sometimes and unfortunately they tend to be a bit expensive just because uh, they are they are so uncommon however one tree will produce quite a bit of fruit um, they're also self fruitful that is you don't need two different varieties you don't need cross-pollination to be able to get fruit um, so they're 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 productive and they're very long-lived as well so uh, you can get get fruit uh, or you can get these trees from nurseries such as Texas pecan nursery Womack Nursery, many other ones. You can buy them bare root. You can also buy potted jujubes as well. So like any other fruit, jujube thrive in full sun. Again, the more sun you get, the more fruit, the better quality fruit, the more sugar content you're going to get. And this is a plant that really does not mind the heat and the drought. Okay, so if you the sunniest place you can put it, uh, it's going to be going to be best. Jujubes do need drainage. They do need good internal drainage, just like with just like any fruit crop. Um, so we're going to plant this in full sun. Uh, bare root trees, of course, are easy to handle. We're going to plant them uh, winter time as early as we can, going into. Uh, uh, late February usually at the latest, but containerized trees, of course, those grown in pots give us a little more flexibility. Um, of course, like uh, we've talked about before, you want to be careful when you pull a tree out of the pot. Watch for those circling roots. It's best to knock off as much of that soil and cut any circling roots. Um, but jujubes will really take off. They'll grow very, very quickly. The trees, the trees will really, really take off. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they're very drought tolerant, but we do want to make sure we water them the first, first year at least, first couple years until they get established. Like with any plant, they're really going to benefit from a good, generous layer of mulch around them. In terms of fertilizer, they really don't have a lot of nutritional needs. However, uh, a little nitrogen fertilizer, whether that's ammonium sulfate or another form of nitrogen. Uh, early in the growing season is going to help. Jujubes really don't don't need a lot of training and pruning. They have a fairly upright growth habit and we really don't have to do a lot to them in terms of pruning. Now as far as pests and diseases again we don't have a lot of problems with them. Deer, if you do have deer they will browse the vegetative growth. Um, I have seen gophers in deep sand uh, feed on the roots. The main thing you're going to be dealing with are the varmints. The squirrels, of course, love these delicious, delicious fruit. Um, I've seen birds, like mockingbirds, be a problem at times, raccoons and possums as well. So your usual four-legged uh, four suspects. Also seen some, some, uh, some insect pests, such as grasshoppers and some caterpillars, be a problem. But generally, these are going to be just minor nuisances. The biggest problem you're going to have are these root suckers. And again, they don't always root sucker, but it's, it's very common to see this. So number one, make sure that you are aware of the grafted portion of the tree. 
Uh, you can usually see the graft fairly, fairly readily, um, but basically anything that comes out from the base that sprouts out, uh, it may even have different shaped leaves, you're going to remove that. Cut it off as close to the ground or as close to the trunk as possible. And then of course anything that comes out uh, from the ground out beyond that, again, uh, placing them where you can mow around them to go ahead and keep these things cut back. Uh, is a good practice. Again, jujube or Chinese date um, is a great alternative fruit. They're very easy. They have minimal pest and disease problems. They're drought tolerant. They're not picky about soil. Um, some people really don't care for the fruit. They're, they're not the most ex exciting fruit, uh, but I really like them. And again, they're extremely easy to grow. Of course, you can always learn more at aggiehorticulture.tamu.edu. For what's growing on, I'm Tim Hartman. For Texas A&M Horticulture.